Hey everyone, it's me, Sean Capri. I'm in my car and you're listening to the most horsepowerful podcast on the internet. It's the Xbox Drive. I'm on a Skype call with my friend Ryan Turford. He's the man on the moose and on our journey today. I forgot the GoPro at home and I don't have a video version on the YouTube, but I played some Far Cry 6 and Nickelodeon, that, that game that's like Smash, so jump on into the Xbox Drive. Bob! Greater than X. Hello, Sean Capri. I ran out of breath a little bit. That might have been the weakest boss since the origins of boss. I'm all dressed up, Ryan Turford, in my suit. I was at the office today. I'm. This is old school Xbox drive. I'm actually driving home. I'm not just like wandering around. At this moment, I actually don't know which McDonald's I'm going to go to, but I, I feel extra pressure to find one because I don't have a video of me driving around. It's all a shame, but I'm I'm happy to be talking to you. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I chuckled a little bit because you had quite the clean intro in there, you know, yep. yelling about stuff. It almost sounded like you didn't know what you wanted to talk about, but that's okay. We're kind There's of so in that nebulous things. zone of the middle of October where it's not quite Halloween yet, but it's close enough to Halloween right. where like the it's spooky cool stuff hell. is kind of to happen, uh, but also we're mm-hmm. just in the thick of a bajillion games at the moment, John. So all the games, Ryan. That's just how it is. Yep. All the open worlds, all the things, even like, and you know, you and I, I think had a pretty good sense of what this season had in store for us in terms of games we're going to be playing. And then all of a sudden, I feel like we're getting surprised even still. Maybe I am. Maybe it's just me. But like, I kind of got, you know, especially this Nickelodeon game that we'll chat about. That, that kind of caught me off guard a little bit. And I see you played NHL. There's all the things. Far Cry 6 is gigantic. What the hell? Uh, yep. I don't know if I'll ever finish that game. But I'll try. I'll damn well try. Metroid is happening. I talked about that on the on the Nintendo Drive. Things are happening, my friend. Tetris Effect Connected. Didn't expect to be playing that on Switch, but I am. Good times, dude. Just all the things. All the things. Well, All, all of them. We're trying. Let's clean out the garage a little bit because, of course, folks tell me if you want to support the show, there's a number of cool ways you can do that. Number one, you can subscribe to us on your podcast feed of choice, whether it's Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We're on all the things, so check us out on your podcast service of choice and listen to the audio version there. Also, if you leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, we will actually read it on this the show. We don't have any to read this week uh, because, surprisingly... We actually oh, went through all the new ones that we got. Uh, but what if we do get a new one in the future? We will read it on the show in this segment. Last but not least, of course, you can watch a video version of this show over on YouTube, youtube.com slash Yumiya Capri. Unfortunately, this week, there is no video version because it's all Sean's fault. Sorry. But at the same time, you can go check out our video versions there. Also, if you want to throw a little tip in the old tip jar, patreon.com slash Yumi Capri is how you do that. You can get early access to this and all of our content as well as some exclusive content over there as well. So shout out what? to the Patreon. Hang on a second. Man. I, I'm going to just jump in. You can't see me or anything. So I'm going <laughs> to brutally interrupt. Shout out to the Patreon. One of the reasons I'm going to blame my forgetting the camera at home was I was up till two in the morning doing the pants Patreon podcast for patrons podcast last night. I feel like last night was really good. People got to listen to it today as we're recording this yesterday as most people are listening to it. So um, yeah, shout out to patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. $3 and up. You get the exclusive content like that. And I am just jazzed up, overtired, loving playing games. I'm loving making content, Ryan. I'm going to see you very soon. And now my interruption is over. That's true. Also, I didn't have it on the dock, but speaking of that, Sean, we should mention next weekend on the 22nd of October, we will be in Toronto at Fan Expo. Mm -hmm. So if you're at Fan Expo or just in Toronto and want to say hello to us, we'll be downtown, you know, just uh, give us a shout out either on Discord or on, on Twitter at Sean Capri at Ryan Turford and uh, let us know you want to hang out and we'll hang out. We'll let hangouts commence or sweet hangs. And if you don't reach out to us, I will I will reach out to you. Some of you people I know around that area and I will be inviting myself over to your house, assuming that you have food for us and <laughs> we'll just <laughs> we'll eat all your snacks. Jesus, Sean. <laughs> pretend that you're, you're, you've you offered that like, you know, if you're ever in town, just come on over. We'll just pretend that you did, did that and we'll call you up on that made up offer that you didn't do. So there. Well, I'm getting I'm looking forward show. to it, man. I'm, I'm invading <laughs> Ontario next weekend. It's going to be awesome. Well, let's get the show back on the road. Let's grab our eight tracks, pop them in. It's time for the playlist. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands. I'm doing all the stuff I normally do on the video with my I hands. I do it with my hands. But, but like mm-hmm. no one can see it. So I, I don't even know who it's for. So, uh, Sean, as you alluded to, you played a lot of games. Tell me about them. What'd you play? Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I watched uh, Maximilian Dude, one of my favorite uh, streamers. He mostly does fighting games. He fired this up, I think, early access. And I was like, look at that little game. 
It looks actually pretty good. It looks a uh, nice little art style. And uh, we actually got a, a code. We reached out and we, we received a review copy for this game. So thank you to the publishers for that. And um, so take it with a grain of salt. But I mean, you look at the game and I think you and I, when we first covered the, the release of this game, I was primarily excited about Powdered Toast Man because <laughs> I'm ancient and my bones are, are dusty and I like Ren and Stimpy. And between that and Ninja Turtles, like I'm kind of here for that. As it turns out, Ryan, there's a whole slew of other characters like SpongeBob and his friend Patrick and a whole bunch of Reptar, I think is a thing. Um, a lot of things that I actually don't know. So I'm coming at this this game with not like all of the Nickelodeon nostalgia. It's like my nostalgia is like the dinosaurs, you know, mm. like uh, uh, Powder Toast Man, etc. Yeah. So but with that said... You know, it's it is kind of what you expect. It's it's totally like Smash. There's a whole bunch of mascot characters in there, and and battling across a variety of different levels from all the different um, from all the different properties. My favorite, of course, I, I think there's probably two. The Technodrome from Ninja Turtles really caught me off guard. That one was pretty pretty amazing. And the of course Ren and Stimpy, the Powder Toast Man one, where you're you're kind of battling across like a kitchen table. There's like a a, a bowl of cereal, mostly full of milk. There's there's all the different um, Ren and Stimpy kind of nostalgic kind of trinkets in the background. So I got I got to notice a lot of that. And I would only assume that those are all there for all the other levels of, you know, properties that I don't really understand. Yeah. Uh, the game actually, like, it's pretty good. It's pretty bare bones, but it's actually, um, you know, if you know how to play Smash, you know how to play this. And I, I actually had a, a lot of fun just kind of going through. Even the achievements really w- was the thing that kind of helped me explore the different characters like there's a there's a variety of achievements mostly like get through the arcade mode which is kind of your standard you know fighter to fighter um tournament style kind of thing um go through that mode with five characters go through it with 10 go through 15 and all and then all of them and that was enough to get me to just continue trying characters i started with powder toast man and i kind of went through the, the characters i knew and what i found ryan was like I actually started liking each next character better than the last one. Um, even though I came to the game for Powder Toast Man, I ended up liking like April O'Neil probably best. Um, mm-hmm. She she is awesome. I've her, heard a lot of people really, were talking about the game really liking mm-hmm. her playing as her. So April is great, and she has a great move where like the the kind of like jump the savior kind of move where you you're falling down, you want to jump up and get a double jump. She flies a blimp like she whips yeah. out a blimp and flies out there, man. It's the turtle's blimp. It's, I, it's a real it's thing. It's pretty. It's pretty good. I actually. It's. It's. You know. There's the, the online. I think. Were you there when I was playing online? On yeah, stream? I, I was Which watching. I was watching your stream. Yeah, I was just. Uh, yeah, I was not in Discord with you, but we were. We were. I was there. Lobby system, Ryan. Pretty good. I like the lobby system. One on one matches working pretty good. Uh, four four player battles, not the best. Mm-hmm. So I think you know results will vary on this front, and I'm going to be keeping my eye on this one because. You know, it is, it really did surprise me. I think you and I maybe had our doubts a little bit on like the quality based on maybe some of the other games that this developer yeah. had made maybe in the past. But this is, this is pretty solid. Like I would say like, a, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to give it a number, but I mm-hmm. almost wanted to give like an indication of like kind of where I'm at. But it's like, it's pretty surprisingly good. Yeah. And um, yeah, definitely some, some polish to be, to be made on that multiplayer side. I wish the characters jumped into the battles with like an actual like voice clip, like something from their, from their show or whatever uh instead they kind of jump in and it's a text thing that you read and it's like oh yeah powder toast man is saying powder toast man like that would be so much better it would really rock into the nostalgia if there was something from the the actual characters and then of course you know they've got ren and stimpy and powder toast man from that and they've got michelangelo and leonardo and april but there's there's clearly characters missing there's clearly opportunity for them to expand this roster and i'm looking forward for that and other sort of enhancements and and more polish on this game as as time goes on nice yeah i mean they i was a li- we were both i know scheduled because like they did the same developer did like these nickelodeon kart racing games like two of them and they're yeah. both really terrible but this really sounds yeah. like a good like first entry in what could be like a, a, a bigger thing they could do like yearly releases like this um where they add like more and more content to it or even not necessarily mm-hmm. year releases but like every two years for example they release a new game with a bunch of new modes and stuff like that because really from yeah. when i was watching your stream the one thing that this was really missing was like all the other modes that smash has because it's got like kind yeah. of the arcade mode and kind of like the basic like 2v like 1v1 or uh like four player fighting system 
in there, but beyond that, you yeah. don't really have like the modes like break the targets or like a story based campaign or like even something no. like spirit mode from smash. So, um, I, I yeah. think that that's why I think it's probably like a good, like first entry for them to kind of get their feet wet with something like this. And then, mm-hmm. um, because it sounds like there's a solid foundation as far as the combat is concerned. Um, and, and as well, yeah. with the characters, the way the characters are balanced. So it's just a matter of, well, you know, I, I don't know about the balance. I, I don't know. That's the one thing I will say. Oh, I'm that's not, just what I'm I've heard well from other enough in these types of things. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, there may be one of those characters in there. Like maybe April O'Neil is the one that's just like way super overpowered or something. I don't know, man. The other thing too, that I would mention yeah. is that there's, um, I noticed on when I played this on a variety of displays actually when when I was streaming I was playing on a display with variable response rate on it and I didn't really notice a whole lot of performance issues on the Series S and then I brought the Series S upstairs where I've got a plasma if you can believe it or not mm-hmm. and it does not of course have variable response rate and it was it was pretty janky on that front like I it was actually pretty distracting that the frame rate just really seemed to struggle and I don't know really what to make of that other than to say that that I noticed it. I don't know why that's the case. I don't know why like a Series S would struggle with a game like this, but it it definitely could use a patch or two on that front as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is something that I, when I heard you mention this, uh, I assumed that it might have been an issue uh, that we saw with Assassin's Creed Valhalla when it first came out that I noticed when we were doing kind of the review for Valhalla. Um, because right. if you played the version for Series X specifically on a Series X or Series S on a TV that didn't have variable refresh refresh rate, um, basically there would be a ton of screen tearing with the game that wasn't really present mm-hmm. in like any other version of the game. So it sounded like to me that that version was coded in such a way where they had assumed that if you had were playing on a Series S or Series X, that you had you would have a variable ref- refresh rate TV um, because that console supports that feature. And I'm imagining something yeah. probably similar happened here because I mean I, I I know you don't have your your Xbox One out there, Sean. But if you were to play it maybe on Xbox no. One, I'm curious if you'd run into the same issue. That's a good point. That's isn't that really interesting because it's obviously less powerful, but maybe you don't run into those issues. That'd be yeah. Man, I should probably bust well, that thing out. What I'm gonna do? Because um, I'm gonna be d- talking about this with Matt Matt Swinski on the PlayStation Drive tomorrow because he's also been playing it, but he's been playing on oh, PlayStation nice. Five, um, and which obviously doesn't support variable refresh rate. So I'm curious right. to know what he thinks, and maybe we can do like a compare contrast kind of thing. Because mm. because ma- maybe I- I'm pretty sure that it's what I described where they they had assume, like they tailored it th- that version in mind with variable refresh rate in mind, which of course in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that still hasn't been fixed. And I don't know if it'll ever get back. That's crazy. Um, That's so, crazy. The number of displays that don't have it, I think vast, like over, there's way more of those than, and people who have VRR. I don't yeah. think that's... And again, this is just me spitballing. Question. I don't know for sure if yeah. that's actually what's happening with this game. Um, but uh, I'm curious to know uh, how what Matt's going to say about it tomorrow. So if you want to know more, mm-hmm. we'll talk about it on the PlayStation Drive tomorrow uh, when I talk to Matt about his PS5 impressions to see if like they're any different. Because uh, who knows? Maybe this is just an, an Xbox-specific issue. But I guess we'll find out. Yeah, and it... it it's one of the games that I think is sprinkled in to add a little bit of flavor in with like kind of the big games here. I think Hot Wheels, the Hot Wheels game that came out recently is up there as well of like kind of nice little surprises. And I'm, <laughs> if anybody has either Hot Wheels or or this Nickelodeon game, like hit me up, man. I'd love to to jump into these games. I, well, I should say Nickelodeon for now, uh, All-Star Brawl. Definitely would love to play with somebody and, and test out further test out that online experience. And then I think probably Hot Wheels will be like a like a Black Friday kind of thing or a holiday mm-hmm. sale of some sort. I'm I'm hoping for that to come on down because it's um I I can't I can't just pay full price for every single game this year. You know what I mean, Ryan? Like there's yeah. just too many there's too many games, man. Oh, I know exactly what you mean because I'm literally in the same place with Hot Wheels at this point where I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty much waiting for a sale on it. Same with same with yeah. Cruise and Blast. I've heard so many amazing things Ooh. about Cruise and Blast. And it's a game I really want to play, but I'm like, I can't justify paying fifty dollars for this right this second when I have so many other games to play. So I think, and that's, that's just, and that's uh, you said it best. I wanted to jump on that because it sounds like I'm being super cheap, which I kind of am, but also I just know that I won't be able to dive into that fully right now. So I think that's yeah. that's a well, yeah, especially way with me. Like I know I won't be able to dive into it until it's on sale anyway. So why might as well just wait at that point, right? So. Exactly. Yep, that's yeah. the best way to put it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, other game we've been playing, we've both been playing more Far Cry Six. 
I yes. really didn't get to play it all that much more since the last time we talked because um, Metroid came out and I basically played and beat Metroid in a weekend. Uh, and yep. then I also played uh, a game that I'm talking about on the PlayStation Drive tomorrow that I can't discuss mm-hmm. here. Um, yep. So I didn't really get too much more time with Far Cry 6. I'm still not at the end yet. Uh, I put maybe five more hours into it, <laughs> but uh, I'll get there eventually. I think I'm you. getting pretty close to the end, uh, but I guess maybe by the time next week's show happens, uh, we'll have it finished. But Sean, what about you? Where are you with this? Yeah, game? I'm I'm coming at you, man. I'm, I'm staying up late. I'm playing the game. I'm dedicated. I want to make sure that I get it finished. The one thing I don't think that we chatted about last week was just sort of like the basic structure of the game. I think we talked a lot about like comparing like the gameplay, the moment to moment versus like this year versus the last uh, Far Cry. Really the structure of the game is very quite similar i was almost surprised to see how similar it was in terms of like heading to basically three main areas of the map with a particular objective in far cry 5 you were hunting down sort of like mini bosses before you got to joseph seed this time around it seems like you are you are trying to recruit you know uh, additional rebellion help to try and really overtake this anton castillo who mm-hmm. is just phenomenal. The more I more I play this, the more uh, cinematics and story beats kind of happen. I get to see this character more and more, and he's just absolutely phenomenal. Probably will go down as one of the best uh, villains, unless something kind of crazy happens as I as I go on here. I'm at a a pretty important part of the game, Ryan. I think I'm. The last time I think we chatted, I had just finished like the the Great Plateau kind of version, almost like the the intro. Mm-hmm. Uh, n- this week, I am done the the first third of it. I went and recruited the Monteros. There's two other main groups that I think I've got to go recruit. At least that's how it's pitching it to yep. me right now. Before taking down the big bad, and I man. What I would say to some people, because I've had a journey on it this week. I think last week I was quite high on it. This week I think I had a challenging week with Far Cry 6 where I just kept getting taken out by helicopters and tanks and the the dying was kind of a lot. And I had this realization, I think I messaged you about this, that the game actually feels quite a lot like like Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. Like with this, I don't know what, what you it's would call like a, a tiered... Yeah, yeah, where it's almost like in, in GTA where the police would get more and more angry with you the yeah. more crimes you would commit. Yeah, like the and bar kind of like was, fills up and when it gets to the top, yeah. like all of like, the like top agents hunt you down. And basically you have enemies uh, literally spawning on top of you. It's very annoying. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And like it's one thing that Far Cry has kind of had walked a line, I think, throughout its entirety is it's an open world that you want to be able to go explore. But like ultimately you are in enemy territory almost always. So people should look at you with, you know, do that double take and go, what are you doing here? And probably they probably should shoot at me. But that can also get in the way of a really enjoyable, explorative kind of experience that I might be also looking for. I want to just get from point A to point B without being hunted down by an entire army. It's very suitable for what is happening in this game. But I had a I had a bit of a struggle with it this week, man. And I would say one of the things that I came away realizing was Sometimes it's better to just hit the story beats and let that do your leveling up. You'll get, you know, all of your your new your guns. You can buy new guns. You get the experience, all the currency that you'll need to buy new gear through that. Um, I think I might have gotten a little carried away with various either side quests or even just things to do on the map. This is the yeah. Ubisoft model. You walk around and somebody will go like, I found this thing over here and there's a, there's a thing you should probably check out over there. I've marked it on your map. Like that's very typical and... I don't think I realized soon enough that that is probably infinite. Like I actually could see that being a almost like a procedurally generated thing where they go, you should go check this thing over there. I don't know that there's a finish to that. So don't try um, is kind of my recommendation, at least at this stage, because the, the, the story moments I think are really, really good. I think the story missions for the most part are, are really good. I had one that I'll talk about and then kind of shut up. Uh, one mission I was flying around in a in a fighter jet of some sort and I was bombing these kind of tobacco fields and um the flying is good but the bombing wasn't all that good so yeah. I'm it's I'm kind of mixed on Far Cry 6 as things kind of go on here Ryan Turford yeah it's yeah and it sounds like you're even though we're not necessarily like meh about kind of the same things it feels like we're somehow getting to the same conclusion anyways totally. which is bizarre yeah. but uh because yeah i was doing a lot of stuff on the map too outside the story content as well for during when we when we thought we were going to just get the review out last week um trying yeah. to play through that yeah, as much no as possible um and going up and blowing like up like anti-aircraft at bases and taking you know, out uh, bases and stuff like that but it almost mm-hmm. made it so that like because there's so much st- more story 
content that you have to play through in this game. It almost there really maybe, is. It, it made me kind of burn out on the game a little bit faster than I probably would have if the game was, you know, yeah. like Far Cry Five. Because I quoted uh, last week on last week's show my playtime with Far Cry Five, where I played it for twenty five hours and. That was enough Far Cry for me. Like, I didn't need any more than that. And right. That right. was enough to basically have me finish the story. Whereas, again, I, I've put double the amount of time into this game. And that's where I think, like, it, that's where, this is where I'm like, I'm getting the same kind of feeling where I was like through the second half of Alien Isolation, where it was like a 20 hour game. And I was like, this really could have been over 10 hours ago. Um, this is kind yeah, of how I feel about I this game, the- too. Because I don't know what the carrot is necessarily. Like, other than you get to go blow up more stuff, which I'm here for. Like, I yeah. like that. I don't want them to stray too far from that. There's some awesome moments of, I just got this gun that basically shoots off fireworks. And Ed Placencia, actually, twitch.tv slash Ed Placencia, good friend of the show, he he showed me this weapon. I'm like, well, that will solve my helicopter and tank problem pretty well. So uh, highly recommend highly recommend that. But there's not much of a, like, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. I don't feel like there's much of a reason to really do all those side missions because I don't mm-hmm. like there's not really much of a an experience kind of leveling up kind of thing I don't feel more powerful which is what I would feel in more of a traditional kind of action yeah. RPG sense um, where I would clear out the map and maybe that makes it less intimidating or, or fewer forces for me to, to deal with that's not the case here so I just after a while I'm like why am I doing this why am I like trying to clear the map of infinite pieces or infinite mm-hmm. quests and things, that's not worth it. There's no leveling up, so to speak, um, in, a, in, a, in at least in my mind, like in a meaningful way. So I'll just stick to the story. And I think I might come back next week with a little bit more of a positive take on this. But mm-hmm. I'm actually really enjoying this process chatting about it with you, Ryan, because I, I'm on a journey just like probably a lot of people like like us would be playing a game like m- most people don't play a game in in 72 hours and then pop out the other side and go this is how it is like that's not a a natural gaming experience but i'm i'm basically just walking people along my journey as i as i take it here my friend yeah and i mean there is a leveling system in the game but the level system is like for buying new weapons from from Carlos, right? Uh, but that's literally all you really get. You're not really getting new skills or anything like that. And I will say the yeah. one side piece of content that was really helpful to the gameplay experience was taking out the anti aircraft bases because then oh, you can definitely. fly the the helicopters of the planes like kind of unimpeded at that point. Um, which, which actually is like the best bit. So like some of my favorite stuff in the game, Ryan. Yeah. Flying the helicopters is awesome. Yeah, or totally. not only that, but you can also um, do like an airdrop on specific locations when you can, when you do the fast travel, yes, which allows you to fast use, travel, which allows you to use the wingsuit if you've unlocked it to then kind mm-hmm. of cover massive distance to get to areas that yes. maybe are you don't have fast travel abilities to Pro get to. Strats. Um, mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. there are reasons for doing some of it, but like the, the main fortresses or the checkpoints and stuff, it's like, yeah, I don't know if I really need to do all that stuff. It's kind of just there. Did you do any of the cockfighting, Ryan? Did you cockfight? No, I stayed did you fight, did you far, fight with your... far away from that, Sean, because... It's pretty, pretty vicious stuff, man. I can't believe that's a... They, I can't believe that's like even a, in like the a, game, it's let a alone thing. They, like, like a fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a side quest all about it too. There's some guy with like a lab somewhere where he's raising these things and he's he's feeding them something special. And it's a whole it's a whole thing. They really lean into it. There's a there's a basically a fighting game, a fighting mini game in this. And they've got the two, I guess, what are they, roosters? Like some sort of poultry. Um they're just muscled out and they it's like, it looks like like Street Fighter and you got move sets and everything. It's very strange, man. So yeah, it's beware of that. Yeah. It's something. There's lots here. There's lots to unpack. For, for sure. That's 6. why we're going to have a bigger discussion about Far Cry 6 uh, probably next week. We don't have an exact yeah. time and date set up for that, but uh, that will be happening at some point. So stay tuned for that. And I got to get it back on track because we're 24 minutes into the show. But the last thing I want to say before we get to breaking news is I also played NHL 22 this week, Sean, because it's out. I'm uh, so this jealous. Week on, it's on um, EA Access. So anyone yes, can play. of course. Because I didn't go buy it because, I mean, I'm going to wait for it to come to the vault, essentially, which is That's what I would the do. move I have. Uh, and uh, I liked what I played. Um, that you could definitely tell that with the, the next gen versions of the game, they made to move to a, a new engine. It is Ooh. frostbite. So mm-hmm. that, there is that, but you can definitely tell Makes that sense. there's like a layer of visual polish that 
that that wasn't there on on the previous gen versions and i think it actually looks a lot better especially like the arenas and the ice in particular um it's got some of the shiniest ice i've ever seen in the game first of all but um Ryan, I think- you just talked about polish and layers and 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 frostbite like it all this all makes sense the puns are just like they're they're amazing it's you've right hit, there in front of you've my hit, face i think six puns right at right all of them mm-hmm. totally totally of course planned out 100%. the zamboni polished nhl 22 Best part is I, I played my first game against the Edmonton Oilers and I beat them five nothing and I was very proud of myself, Sean. Wait, who, what? Myself. I thought this was a realistic game. I thought this was the thing. This we talked about the Calgary Flames beat the, Cal- the Edmonton Oilers all the time. That's how that oh worked. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you know what? I want I want like old school. Was this a thing? I I, I want like um, nineteen eighty nine Calgary Flames versus nineteen eighty nine Edmonton Oilers. You know, I want or like even like nineteen ninety four. Like let's get back into those days. I want to see like old rosters. I don't want it to be up to date. I don't know I, who these kids are right now. I have a funny Honestly, feeling like, that when I walk up to Sean in person uh, next week, and if I'm wearing my Calgary Flames hat, he's just going to flap it off my head. I might head set it on fire. I'll, I'll show you a Calgary Flame. Clearly. You know what I mean? Clearly. Yeah. So NHL 22, it, it's pretty fun. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for it to come to the vault, but I actually Yeah, we should play like against it. each other. We should. We should do that. We should play. Time, Maybe next week we're going to be in the same room together. We are going to be in the same room together next week. It's going to be a Amazing. thing. Amazing. So there you go. All right. I'm slamming this breaks on this conversation, John. It's time for some breaking news. Uh, Slow news week, though, because all the games are coming out. uh, So we don't have a too many news stories to go through. But first one was actually a really interesting one because we know that the 20 year anniversary of the Xbox is coming up. But we had literally heard nothing about what they were going to do for the 20 year anniversary besides uh, the 20 year anniversary Halo console. Um, that's coming out. They're also mm-hmm. doing some other cool stuff. So Microsoft yeah. have announced a new controller and Xbox wireless headset celebrating 20 years of Xbox. Both products will be a translucent gray color with the controller yeah. featuring a black and Xbox green uh, colors on the back. You also have like the Xbox green behind the D pad as well on the controller. Yeah. And then the headset is going to also feature green on the microphone itself, as well as on the plastic between kind of the headband and the earmuffs, essentially. Both are basically going to launch on the same day on November 15th, which is officially the 20th birthday of the Xbox. So of course, uh, celebrating their birthday in style. Um, but before I ask you about what you think about this, Sean, I want to bring in Eric cave from YouTube. Nice. You left a, a question there about this. He said, while listening to this show, I saw the announcement for the new 20th anniversary controller from Xbox. I love the translucent gray cover with the green accents that call back to the OG Xbox, and I'm super tempted to get it. However, I love my Elite Series 2 controller, and I can't mm. imagine going back to a regular controller. This leads to my question for you guys. How many controllers is too many, and is it bad <laughs> to get a controller and not use it that much? Basically, I need you to convince me to get this new 20th anniversary one. So, Sean, what, what do you think about uh, this announcement as well as uh, Eric's question? First of all, I think November 15th probably was supposed to be the Halo date. Wouldn't it be amazing to buy Halo, walk into a store, buy Halo, buy a console, buy a headset, buy a controller, all the things. It's too bad that that didn't make it, but that's okay. I think the controller is outrageously gorgeous. I think they completely hit it out of the park. I am buying this, even though I did just purchase a Design Labs with the Xbox Drive design on it, the rubber design that we've created thanks to our patrons. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will be buying this 1,000%. I think uh, Xbox has actually kind of taken the the mantle away from Nintendo on this front because the design itself kind of reminds me of what Nintendo did with the Splatoon Pro controllers, which I love the green and the and the pink on the handles and the the sort of like see through kind of design with some not see through elements to it. I think this is great. I I feel like you might not be right there with me, but I'll, I'll turn over to you in a second. But this is to say that Eric, yes, there's not too many. There's never too many controllers. You you don't need to use a controller. I actually don't think that I would be using this controller either. I will also say that I have gone back from using an elite controller to using just the regular controllers that come with the series um, consoles because I actually think those controllers are so damn good that I actually don't miss my elite nearly as much as I would have imagined. Uh, prior to going back, my friend. Yeah, I mean, I'm in agreement with you. I don't think necessarily, you know, you can have or have too many controllers. Um, oh, maybe you can. Not um, when they're this good. Not not when they're this, like, when they, I think they put a lot of care into this one. But I think that it, whether or not people like it, it's it's up to the individual. But because I, I feel yeah, like it's you all, might not it's like all aesthetics choice. And it's not so. So first of all, 
I'm not super excited about this one, and uh, this is one that I'm not uh, personally picking up, but there is a reason for that. And that is, it pretty much looks like the Nintendo Switch Pro controller to me, which is also already a design I don't really love super much. Not only that, but like, mm. I love different color controllers that are not necessarily black or gray controllers. Like, I'm more in right. the like, uh, crazy colors per camp. Like I would have, I would have snap bought this is this was like the same green as the OG Xbox, uh, controller S green that you were able to get that I, yeah. that actually matches yeah. my, uh, OG controller S's at home. Um, but since that isn't an option, that's why I think I'm a little less excited about this. And that's why like I already have enough controllers already. Cause I have like, I have like at least 12 Xbox one or series <laughs> S controllers over the years because I've just collected wow. so many of them from all kinds of different colors. So I probably don't need any more. Um, got, that's why I think I'm just sounds like a big this. number. Not only that, how many I've got, you probably hmm. actually have just as many, but not only that, but I am also buying the halo Xbox, which also comes with a halo 20th oh, yeah. anniversary controller, which is what I prefer more. So because I'm already buying a 20th anniversary product for, from Xbox, it's just the halo branded one. Um, that's mm -hmm. why I'm, I'm leaning more towards that versus this one anyways, as well. But. I regret not pre-ordering that Halo console, even just to make my mind up later. Um, and I bring that up to say this too, Ryan. I Number one, Donnie Reese, I think, is right with you on that. Uh, the green would have been better than the black. So I think you're not alone on that front. You've at least got Donnie, I'm sure uh, a few others. I also want to give a quick shout out to the Nintendo Drive that I recorded yesterday. I feel like I ranted maybe a little too hard. Uh, I haven't even heard anything back from people, but I just want to walk that back a little bit. I kind of apologize. And if people want to know what I'm talking about, you have to check out the Nintendo Drive ball. Yeah, you guys talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of controversial topics that, that on yeah. yesterday's show. I, I felt whiny about it. I didn't, I didn't like how that, I, I couldn't even listen back to our show, and I usually really enjoy listening back to us, but there you go. Well, actually, Sean, no, just kidding. All right, this <laughs> announcement uh, is something we already knew was coming because it already was rated mm -hmm. by like four different ratings boards. But yeah. Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy definitive edition has been announced for Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. It will contain updated versions of GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas with new graphical and gameplay enhancements. They will launch sometime later this year. Also important thing to note about this for us Xbox users is that they had um, Xbox classic versions of these games that were available on the store that you could buy for 360 that were compatible with that console. They are actually being delisted when this comes out. So we just be aware How that that's convenient. a thing. How um, convenient. But that's actually hap also happening on literally every platform that those games are available on, including PC and uh, PlayStation, which I know people are not happy about. So I wanted to throw that in here. I think, this, though, this is an awesome announcement because those are games that totally. um, I think are really fun. Um, yes, they mm -hmm. do have their problems, especially mission design-wise in particular, especially with Vice City and San Andreas, uh, if you go back and play those games in particular. Um, but I did actually full episodes on about these on the crossroads um, earlier this year because I, I put them both on my list and I think that they're both great games despite the helicopter mission in Vice City making me want to throw my controller out the window. Oh, wow. Um, Infamous. But uh, Sean, what do you think about this announcement? It's so important. The, this, these games are so important and and for a variety of reasons. They're just so popular. They changed. They like, they basically invented an entire entire genre, of course. And they're they're speaking of infamous. Like these are notorious games. <laughs> been and parents. We we were basically kids. I think you and I are, are, are similar in age. Uh, maybe maybe a couple years different. But like mm -hmm. we were probably too young when we were playing these games. Probably a little too young. And now here we are. We're older, wiser, and we we now we're old enough to actually play these games. Uh, very cool that they're being brought to next-gen stuff. I'm, I'm very curious to know about loading times. I don't know why that's the first thing that springs to mind for me when thinking about Grand Theft Auto and on new hardware. It's like, yeah, that, that title screen won't stand a chance. We'll just get right into the game and play, and that'll be super cool. And for a lot of people who, I mean, maybe might have missed it, it's, it's really this is probably going to be the best way to experience those games. I, I haven't played them really in a long time. I haven't fired up those games in forever. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can only imagine how janky they would be yeah. to go back to the originals. But I, you, I think you've played these games pretty. Oh, recently. I did. I played them last yeah. year uh, to prepare for yeah. the crossroads, and they're very like if you go into the mindset that they're like very arcadey, just over the top, like not realistic in any way kind of experiences. You're gonna have a good time, right? Um, right. But whereas if you're expecting some kind of, you know, semblance of realism, like no, it's not there. Like the driving kind of sucks. 
The shooting kind of sucks. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. You could have fun blowing it's stuff all up. all mediocre. And because yeah. uh, that was something that Rockstar <laughs> just improved over the years. Like, especially with Grand Theft Auto right. Five in particular, where um, they, it was the first game that I can remember from them where they finally got the driving right into Grand Theft Auto game. Um, and the combat didn't feel as clunky as some of the other games uh whereas well, it was all the genres mixed into one it was like rpg and driving game like racing game and shooting game and all like all of yep. the things and there's of course all the mini games as well they they would never be top tier any of those like kind of mechanics at all there's no way mm -hmm. yeah exactly so it's just they were trying to they went for the kitchen sink approach which is why they couldn't perfect everything um so they i think for newer fans of grand theft auto I think these might be a little bit harder to go back to because, again, the, if, you're so, if you've only played Grand Theft Auto V in particular, um, yeah. it's going to be hard to go back and do like some of the escort missions, for example, in some of these games or some of the like hair, hair pulling inducing missions in these games as well. Like they, the mission structure is not as refined as today's. But they also said that there are some gameplay enhancements coming with the game. So maybe they're going to smooth some of the stuff out. Um, so I'm just excited to see what they look like in action. We just got a quick trailer basically just showing that the, some of the art from these games, but we haven't really seen any of them in action yet. So I'm curious to yeah. know what changes or how, or how they're going to tinker with some of these and just how much of an improvement they're going to be besides maybe or just music. the stuff. Yeah, if all the like music the radio come stations back, obviously just a massive part of the experience. Yeah, like um between that and also I think it might be interesting even just to jump in as a like almost like a time capsule because these are so like it's such a social commentary really in it in a hyper kind of way. I I'd like to go like what were we talking about back when these games came out? Like what was what are they going to be um sensationalizing or satirizing in in these in these games and it's probably a big reason why we probably won't get a Grand Theft Auto for quite a while. I don't know that we have the same environment uh, socially for a game like that. So it would be interesting to jump back into that when it was like, that was what people were looking for in their entertainment. Like they were looking for things that like push the envelope and, and yet they're probably offensive on a, on a number of levels. I don't, I'm very curious to yep. see how that holds up in today's landscape. Um, and I just, I'm more fascinated than anything. I, I kind of want to just walk this line very carefully to go, I don't want to just like go into something that is, you know, 15 years old or whatever, just because it's super offensive and that's what I'm here for. I'm kind of just more interested to see what, what are we going to, what Pandora's box are we opening here? What yeah. did we talk about? How were we pissing people off back then? Well, and we were like, that's the thing. We were upsetting people back then. Man, people, what are people going to say about Grand Theft Auto, the, these Grand Theft Auto games now in 2021? Well, see, here's the thing, though. I, I should preface the fact, though, that like one of these games takes place in the 80s and one of them takes place in the 90s. So the, the talking, like if you listen to the talk radio in those games or if you play through the story mode, they're not necessarily hitting on points that happened. Like they're not all about social commentary from the era they came out in. A lot of them are, are social commentary on things that happened in the 80s or 90s. So I think it's a, sure. it's a different flair. It's very much Grand Theft Auto 3 in particular. That one is all about kind of the early 2000s because that's when it came out because that that game is almost 20 years old at this point. So, um, or it is about 20 years old, I think. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's I, more of I, the it's, interesting thing, but yeah, I'm curious to know what some, how people are going to react to some of the stuff that's in that game. Cause it's been a while. It's been a while for some. Yeah. It, I think it's less about like when the games are set, but more just like what, where was the envelope and how did it get pushed back when these games first came out? Like, I yeah. think that's really what I'm interested to see, but you're right. Like they're, they're sort of period pieces. If you can go so far to say something like that about Grand Theft Auto. For sure. All right, Sean, let's up some of our friends into the car with us. It is time for the carpool. Folks at home, if you would like to have your question read and answered on the carpool, there's a number of ways to do that. Number one, follow us on Twitter at Yumi Capriz. We put up a question post every single Tuesday afternoon. Um, you can leave your question there and we'll read it on the show. Or if you leave a comment on YouTube, just like Eric Cave did, um, we'll read it on the show. Or... You can join our Discord. It's free to join. The link's in the show notes. You can leave your question in the Xbox Drive section. Just make sure to tag Sean or I in there, and we'll make sure to answer it on the show, just like Hopple via Discord did. And Hopple nice. asked the question, what is your opinion on games where you control a mouse pointer with the Analog 6? There are some good <laughs> and some bad games. And I think uh, he actually listed some of these suggestions, right, John, that are on the document? Uh, That's right, like yep. Lost Worlds, he says, is a good one. Violet Remastered, I don't even know what game that is. Uh, apparently that's Me bad. Uh, the Procession <laughs> to Calvary, he's not really sure about. And then No Man's Sky, he says, is good. So funny enough, we were talking about Far Cry, Sean, a game, a yeah, game where you control, control the mouse pointer as well as pretty much every 
modern Ubisoft title is, is kind of yeah. falls into this boat. Um, I don't really like it that much because it, it just takes longer to get around the menus. One of the mm-hmm. things I do appreciate about Far Cry 6 in particular, though, is that, yes, you control the mouse pointer, but if you just press the, the up, down, left, or right on the D-pad, yeah. you'll just immediately go to the different options. So you can just pretend mm-hmm. like that's not even an option there and, and you just go about your business. But not every, every game does that. But personally, I don't love this. Sean, what do you think? <laughs> it's sort of like just arrived, you know, it's like, and this is how uh, UI is going to be. This is how the user, user interface is going to be. Um, I, I think that that's more fascinating to me than really anything else about it. Uh, and you're right. Far Cry does it the best. I don't, I don't have like a disdain for it. I'm just more like, where did this come from? And like, it's blatantly the same across the board. It's just like somebody's copying somebody. I don't know what the original one was, but it does seem like, Destiny like either a one, Destiny as far or as the, the yeah. first one I could think of. Destiny one, I mm-hmm. think. And like, and, and No Man's Sky was right around there as well. Like, I think we we're talking like 2014, 2015 this time. Yeah. And that's uh, and then and they're just so they're just so similar. I don't know if this is something like baked into like. I don't know, Unreal 4 or something? I don't even know if that's what engine Far Cry even uses. I I don't know. But it's everywhere. I don't I don't hate it. I don't think that um I, I think we've kind of answered the question about what done what does it the best. I think Far Cry 6 is right there, man. Yeah. Especially because they just make it optional. It's there if, if you want it. Uh yeah. Next up, Court Lalonde at Court Lalonde asked the question: What with the release of Forza and Halo in the next two months, Xbox is about yeah. to own the news cycle. Will they be able to ride this momentum into 2023? Maybe. I mean, I don't know how much Forza and Halo are necessarily going to dominate the news cycle or own it necessarily, because um, I think, don't get me wrong, Court, I think that they're two of the biggest games coming out for the rest of the year. But I don't know necessarily if they're going to own the new cycle because there's a lot of games coming up between now and then um, or even after that, because just looking at the, the Yumi Capri spreadsheet for next year, it's it's kind of ridiculous already. <laughs> I, like I was commenting on, on Discord, Sean, but I'm already at 30 games coming out in the first three months of next year. Good um, and God. those are just nat- not- notable releases. We don't put every game that's coming out on there. So um, I think it's tougher just to stand out with this many games going on. So I don't know if they're necessary. Yeah. I would debate the point about them being able to own the news cycle, but I think they're going to be able to carry the momentum until their next release, but we don't even know when their next release is happening at this point. I mean, it could be a year or so away. Like who knows? Uh, like Starfield, we know You're is coming crazy out next November, a year away. Yeah. Well, I mean, no Starfield's way. coming out next no. November, but what, what do you think is coming up from Microsoft between now and next November, Sean? Why well, I, I what I actually think is happening here is maybe they've got an opportunity. Uh, we chat about this. Maybe they have a chance to finally like kind of settle into a bit more of a Nintendo style of promoting what the next game is. Like they've really got us focused in on these two games, which they should. These are massive. I think that Forza is going to be enormous. I think they're going to just check off all the boxes. It looks really, really good. There is some previews that came out and some glowing uh, previews coming out, um, and so. At least if you're in the Game Pass kind of ecosystem, you are focused on these two things. Um, Back for Blood just came out as well. So I do think they're going to dominate quite well. And especially when you think about like relative to what, right? Like where is Gran Turismo? Uh, it's nowhere to be found. Where is it's Call of Duty? I don't. Well, not well, exactly. Like not, it's not even close to Forza. Right. Like I think yeah. Forza will dominate that space and I think it will be massively popular. Um, Halo will dominate the first person shooter space and, and um, be interested to see because they've, they've almost got a really good timing in between um, things for Destiny, expansion packs for Destiny. So they've, they've got a nice spot to kind of win some people over from all different first person shooter experiences. They, they, and, and it's free, of course, with multiplayer. I think I think it's unwise to underestimate Halo and its dominance this yeah. uh, this holiday season. Yeah. Well, of the three shooters in particular, I will agree with you on that one. They do have the momentum of the three, the big three with Call big of Duty time. and Battlefield because after mm-hmm. that Battlefield beta, I think that killed a lot of people's excitement about that. And then uh-huh. Call of Duty, I don't think people are super excited about, but it's going to still, still sell nope. millions anyways because of the course. casual crowd. Um, so it's just going to be interesting what people are going to talk about, but uh, yeah, Battlefield I, will be delayed. Mark we'll my see. words, Battlefield will be delayed. Ryan Turford, it's it. It yeah. will be by the time we. I think even before we, um, before we record next week, I think we'll get a tweet saying like we'll get the we'll get the CD Projekt Red uh, mm-hmm. style JPEG with the announcement. 
God, I hope so. All right. Last quick question comes to us from Ribble at Riboflavins on Twitter. <gasps> Ribo! I know. I couldn't believe he asked a question either, but this one's more of a Sean question, but I'll answer too. He says, going deep with this one, have you ever actually won anything on McDonald's Monopoly? <laughs> Sean, you were tweeting about and talking about McDonald's Monopoly on last week's show. What is the biggest thing oh, you've ever won from a McDonald's Monopoly? Have you won anything? I just realized I didn't get McDonald's. Uh, I've won like hamburgers and, and fries and small drinks and stuff like that, but not any of the the prizes that they print on the side of the stuff. So that's it's a sad, sad state. Of, and I play it. like I, I keep all the pieces. And I go to, you guys know this, I go to McDonald's a sickening amount. So I haven't won anything really, but... You know, maybe we need to get together. Maybe we almost need to have like an office pool on this. Like what other pieces does everybody have? Like in my car right now, I've got uh, Miles Canyon and the Ronald McDonald. Um, what is this? The house charity thing. Uh, Alberta location. That, that If I get all those pieces, like the railroad thing. Yep. I got two of those. If I get uh, all four of those, I get $1,000. I got the Toronto airport, Sean. I can have that. Oh, that okay. There. So there you go. I got I'll the Columbia some- Ice Field. I feel like and I need Niagara to bring Falls. my Monopoly pieces from this year to uh, to Toronto with me so we can you it's know, a good plan idea. this out, Sean. Um, as for me, Niagara I Falls actually, is like the, the park place. I need the boardwalk. Whatever the boardwalk is, then we're that talking. That one's so yeah. hard to get, though, Sean. Yeah, no it's idea. impossible. Um, <laughs> as for me, the biggest one I won was actually an instant winner, so it wasn't actually a uh, big prize on the board either, but it was a $100 yeah. gift card from McDonald's. That was the biggest Whoa, Oh, to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. No, amazing. so it, was, it basically paid, paid for a McDonald's coffee every single day for work for like a couple months. So Or nice. one really romantic evening, right? <laughs> or one really one or romantic evening by myself, Sean. Yeah. yeah. Light the candles. Get a couple Big Macs. Mm-hmm. I'm, sh- I'm shaking my head. I'm going so the hungry the right now. Anyways, oh I'm gonna go, to we got to go so Sean can get some food. But before we go, Sean plugs go. Huge plug, twitch.tv slash Sean Capri, Saturday night, this weekend, we are going to be, what date is that, Ryan? I don't know if you can help me on the calendar here. We're going to be playing Back for Blood, where we're going to take a quick break on Halo Saturdays. We're playing Back for Blood. It's on Game Pass. You all have it. Let's get everybody together. Let's shoot some zombies. Let's have some fun. Twitch.tv slash Sean Capri. Get in that Discord, man. I'm telling you guys, it's the best place to be. The the links are in the show notes. Get on in there. It's free. You don't have to be a patron. Um, so twitch.tv slash Sean Capri, Discord. Follow me on Twitter, at Sean Capri. It's Sean like Connery. Capri like the pants. I'm going to go to the vet hospital here and pick up some drugs for my dog, who's on his last days, my friend. He's, a, he's not doing so good. We'll, we'll, Sorry, we'll drug God. him up anyways. My That's okay. God. He's old. As for me, you can find me on Twitter, at Ryan Turford. <laughs> also, shout out uh, to myself for the, the crossroads, <laughs> because we're hitting the top five this weekend. Wow. Uh, I'm very excited nice. to uh, make Joey Splats mad at kind of my picks for the top five. It's going to be very exciting. So look out for that on the podcast feed. Lastly, you can find us on Twitter at YumiCapri on podcast services around the globe as well as youtube.com slash YumiCapri. So for Sean Capri, I'm Ryan Tufford. This has been episode 211 of the Xbox Drive and we out. Bye. Thanks for listening, everybody. The Xbox Drive is fueled by patrons at patreon.com slash Capri. And from the bottom of my heart, I am so grateful to the nearly 70 patrons who support us each and every month. With special thanks to our Capremium producers, Dallas Ford, Lee Navarro, the fearless leader of the Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life team, and Jonathan Brown, the man behind the music on the Xbox Drive and the Nintendo Drive. You can support Jonathan Brown at youtube.com slash gamingpurplemonkey. Our platinum producers, Robbie Bobby Miller and Trucker Sloth, and all of our gold members, Argo, Benji Kong, Brendan Myers, Dallas Robbins, Dano, Emily O'Kelly, Foolish Fuji, Heather Boney, James Johnson, Dr. Doom, Joel Brooks, Jose Jimenez, Mac Time, Marcus O'Neill, Mr. and Mrs. Nasty Boots, RJ Kern, Skinny Matt, and Xavier Reyes. If you'd like to support this show, Go to patreon.com slash Capri and choose the Patreon tier that works for you.